My name is Chris Kimsey and I am a record producer, sound engineer, sound consultant, um, anything to do with sound, um, that's my game. We've just walked into screen one at the Olympic Studios, which used to be Studio One when I started here in 1967, March 1967 to be exact. I entered the building, I was 17 years old I think. Um, and I was a tea boy and there was always music at home on, on, the, uh, on the record player. I'm here today uh, to listen to the sound of the cinema, of all the cinemas here, uh, because I'm the consultant sound advisor for Olympic cinemas. As we've been in lockdown for some time, um, I like to pop in now and then just to make sure that uh, the system's working and everything sounds good. Um, and so far, so good. Is it 66 speakers, Tom? At school, I think when I was maybe 12, yeah, 12 years old, I was selected to go to a studio, a very small studio that was run by the Inner London Education Authority. Um, which was at the back of Tottenham Court Road. Um, and it was a drama studio where you would record poetry, um, readings, and um, there was only one other student from another school that was going every Saturday um, to that. His name was Ray Staff, and Ray ended up being one of the best mastering engineers in the industry. Um, he's just retired. Um, um, who did we record there? Dame Sybil Thorndike was one. Um, but it was really my love of, of recording, capturing sound um, that sparked my imagination. So this used to be Studio One. Um, we have 72 speakers in here. There's Dolby Atmos. We have speakers in the ceiling. We have surround speakers in the walls all the way around. Sub bass speakers at the back, both ends and at the front. Um, so it's a lot of speakers to listen to and make sure they're all working well. When I left school, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and I used to pass Olympic maybe every week or every other week. I had a girlfriend who lived around the corner and I just saw Olympic Studios. I thought, well, I wonder what's in there. So. I came in and said, do you have any jobs? And they said, no, go away. But I kept coming back. And eventually they took my name and number. And um, about five months later, um, I got the call to come for an interview. Um, and at the same time, I was getting ready to um, have a job as a uh, supermarket fitting engineer. Um, because a friend of mine, that's um, his brother, that was his business. So I came for the interview and met Keith Grant, who was the studio manager and who built Olympic, and also Anna Menzies, who was the um, studio booking manager. And I thought, God, I wonder what they're going to ask me. So I walked into this building and immediately was taken into Studio One, where we're sitting today, which is now Screen One. And I was just amazed. I was amazed. First of all, there was like a four track tape recorder, um, soon to be eight track, um, uh, four speakers in the, in the soffits, in the ceiling, and this incredible room full of uh, orchestral equipment. Um, and Keith Grant interviewed me, which went upon the lines of, do you know how to wire a 13 amp plug? Uh, which I did. <laughs> Um, that was the most technical thing I was asked. And then we just talked about, um, I, we talked about music actually, and my love of recording, and then that was that. 
And then uh, a week later, I got a call and said, can you start Monday um, for the tender price of £11 a week? And so I did. Um, and I started as a tea boy. And my first session, I remember I was told to go to Studio One, to the control room, introduce myself and sit down and observe. Nothing more, nothing less, just sit there quietly. So I walked in and the engineer turned around and looked at me and said, do you work here? I said, yes. He said, great, take over. He said, my assistant's just gone sick. So I sat down at the, um, it, actually it was eight track then. I sat down at the eight track machine. I looked at the tape box and recognized that they were notating the song title and whether it was a false start or a BD, a breakdown or complete. That made sense to me. And I knew how to press record um, and um, fulfilled the session, which was I think an hour long. And at the end of it, um, the engineer who remains one of my dearest friends today, Alan O'Duffy, um, quite a famous engineer. He recorded Jesus Christ Superstar, um, a, a bunch of, of Rocky Horror Show, some uh, enormous records. Um, he said to me, he said, how long have you worked here? I said, well, now about an hour. <laughs> this is quite an interesting artifact. Um, these columns, uh, these are from the Virgin period when Virgin owned the building, um, and they were diffusers in the studio. I think these were from Studio 2, which was in the basement. So one side is sound absorbent, and then you flick it round, and it's hard service. Um, and interestingly enough, it really does change the sound quite a lot. Even in the cinema, if you flick these round, it becomes quite live. Yeah. I remained um, as a assistant engineer um, mainly working um, the daytime shift from anything between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. or 9 till 5, 9 till 6, which would be um, orchestral sessions, uh, film soundtrack, um, kind of easy listening music, um, things like um, Shirley Bassey, um, and then the film music, things like uh, the Thomas Crown Affair, the Italian job comes to mind, um, Get Carter, um, um, Barbra Streisand. Um, so a, a lot of knowledge and experience was gained from those sessions in not only the technical side of it, microphones, but also how to work with people. I mean, working with an orchestra of 70 people, the engineer has quite a big task. Um, um, obviously, you've got the producer there, but the engineer is like the conduit um, between everybody, between the artist, the producer and the musicians. The screen was in the same place because Olympic would record a lot of movie soundtracks. The soundtrack to The Italian Job uh, was recorded here. The uh, first Thomas Crown uh, film soundtrack was recorded here with Windmills of My Mind. Because the film would be projected from 35 um, mag film onto the screen and the conductor would see the action on the screen. The orchestra couldn't see it and he would be conducting to be in time with the film on the screen. Uh, so that was fascinating. It was quite amazing to be working at Olympic because at that time it was, there was only Abbey Road or Olympic Studios. Um, um, Abbey Road, as someone famously said, um, Abbey Road had the Beatles, we had everybody else. Um, I started to assist Glyn Johns, who is um, a real legendary producer engineer who recorded The Who, The Stones, The Eagles. All those albums were recorded in this room. Um, and the first time I worked with Glyn was on a Stones session. I'd never met the Stones, I wasn't into their music, I was into the film music. Um, and um, uh, I'd set up the studio, no one had arrived and I'm waiting and two guys came through the door and I called security because they looked a bit dodgy um, and security came up. Anyway, it was Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts and I assisted for Glynn on many, many sessions. The Stones, Humble Pie, uh, The Faces, um, The Eagles, um, a lot, a lot of sessions. Um, 
and um, that that was another side of my knowledge after the learning about the orchestral recording that was one thing but the kind of the band situation was another one um, and realized that um, it was also a, a job of a psychological job as well to to encourage um, and help people get the best performance they you know, could get um, and to keep teamwork together as well um, and so between those two mentors um, it was a great experience. If these walls could talk there's so much they could say. Another uh, kind of twist of fate was that I was an assistant working for a French artist called Johnny Halliday who was like the Elvis Presley of France and um, um, the this was the, I think the second day of the session in Studio Two at Olympic. Um, the engineer never turned up. He called in sick in the morning. So the people were running around saying, oh, well, who's going to engineer? And um, the producer said, well, we like Chris, can he do it? And they said, well, he's never engineered a session before, but I'm sure he can. So I did um, and finished the whole album. Um, during that album, um, Lee had assembled an amazing group of musicians to be Johnny's backing band. So there was Ringo Starr, there was Peter Frampton, there was Gary Wright, and from that album um, formed my friendship with Peter Frampton. This this building is um, is part of my DNA, um, and I just love the building. So and I'm still here, um, 50 years later, a bit more. So. Thank you, Olympic.